Hi, today I'd like to show you how to make a little mini house snap bag. Um, so I just thought it was kind of fun. It's a cute little bag. It's a great way of using up some small pieces of fabric. And I just thought you might like to make one too. So I have actually done a little pattern for the bag and that's going to be on my website called a house snap bag. My website is gourmetquilter.com and it's going to have some material needs and things for you. It's going to have a little bit of information inside and I'm just going to show you how to make one now. So what we need to have for this is we need to have our, our main fabric which is the background which is this lighter blue. Our lining fabric which I've got is this darker blue in this case and on this one here it was a dark green. And then something for the grass where the house is sitting on so a strip with some um, fusible web on the back of it that we're going to pop there. And all these dimensions are written on the back of the pattern here. So they're cut five inches wide, the batting, and we need some batting. Just a thin batting in there will work really nicely. And that's nine inches long, and the background, sorry, the lining was um, 13 inches long, and this is a two and a quarter inch wide strip, five inches long, because that's going to go across the middle there. Now for the little snap bits, they're kind of fun, um, and they're made out of some metal tape measure. You know these metal tape measures that you can buy that allow you to measure things, all sorts of different things. Well, these are amazingly useful for things like this. So you can cut these with the, with regular scissors, but not your best scissors, but some sort of household scissors. And it tells you on the pattern again that you need to cut them, two of them four and a quarter inches long. So I've cut, them, cut mine already, and we need some masking tape because we're going to fold that over the ends because the metal's a little bit sharp. But before we do that, we just need to round those edges again with your um, household scissors, you can just cut little rounded edges. So I've mostly done these, so I'll just finish off this last one before I go any further so that they're ready when we need them. So I've got my masking tape. Now to cut my masking tape, you can just cut it any old way, but uh, I like to just be a little bit uniform with my cutting. And I just lay it along on my board, just lightly. It's not stuck down hard. And I just cut every couple of inches or so because I just want some two inch lengths. And then I'm going to pick that up off there and I'm going to stick that over the end. Now I've cut two because this masking tape was quite um, light or thin and I thought well maybe we'll put a couple of layers on because what we're trying to do is protect the fabric from that metal edge because with a little bit of usage and things that's going to wear through on the edges so we're just prolonging the life a little bit by covering that end. Now my tape is also a touch wide, which I haven't let any of these little things worry me at all. And I'm just going to get, grab my scissors and just trim down next to the tape measure to trim off that excess masking tape there so that everything is sitting quite comfortably. I don't worry about the corners, that won't be a problem. We just want that metal covered at the ends. So they're ready. I'm going to pop them to one side for the moment while we get the bag made. So we don't need the, the lining just at the moment, we need to have the batting and I've just used a thin batting here and I've laid my main fabric on top of that. So some fusible web is a really good idea because it just sticks everything in place and I've got some little pieces here that I've also got fusible web on the back of which I'm going to cut the house and the door and the roof out of. So great for using up all sorts of little bits and pieces but first of all we'll pop this bit of grass on and get that in place. Now you may want to centre that so you may want to do a light uh, finger press of where the middle is on this main piece of fabric and then you can roughly gauge where the middle piece is, middle is of your green piece and then we're just going to iron, iron that in place. So I'll bring the iron over And then I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch along that green, just close on the green, close to that raw edge. So this is raw edge applique, but it, it because we've fused it on, and actually I've used some very delicious Hoffman batiks, and that the batik fabrics don't fray so much. So these are ideal for this type of raw edge applique. But you could, of course, do other forms of stitching. You might prefer to blanket stitch it or whatever your preference happens to be. Oh, 
houses have grass in front of them apparently, so we have grass on first, we're going to grow the grass and then we're going to build the house. So just both sides of that green. So that's all ready, now we need a house. So as I've mentioned, we've got some pieces here already with some um, paperback fusible webbing on the back. Now there is a suggested shape in your pattern for a house, which is quite similar to the one that I've got showing here. However, there is no specific shape required. You can see from these other ones, they're all just a little bit wonky, all just a little bit different. So you can just cut some random shapes and make it look a little bit like a house. Basically what you need is some walls, a door and a roof and everyone thinks, wow, that's a house. So I'm just going to cut, I'm not even drawing it first. It's not exact. These are little folk art houses. So I'm going to set my little house there. I might do my roof out of this one. And this one here that I've done has got a little flat roof so I might do something like that again. My line's not particularly straight even. Oh, it's a bit top heavy, so we might just trim a bit of that back off again. And then we just need a little door. So this is just a little curved door shape. So you can have a lot of fun with this sort of applique. You can do almost anything that you feel like doing and make it look semi-reasonable. I think my roof is a touch long still, so I'm just going to shorten that a touch. Yes, I'm much happier with that now. So play around till you're happy with it. You're using very small amounts of fabric, so you don't have to worry too much if you have to trim a little bit off. Now I need to iron those in place, and then I'm going to free motion stitch around them because that's how I like to do it. Let's bring the iron over. So I'm just ironing that just so that it sits right at the grass. roof on top. The roof could be at a slightly jaunty angle. Don't really think of houses being jaunty, do we? But we're having a jaunty house. And a little door. Now you could make a bigger house with windows and you could have trees in the garden. But today we're having a house with grass. So that's all ready for me to stitch around now. I'm just going to quickly change my foot because I prefer to do the free motion. Put this on. And I'm going to plug this in because it's got the, the BSR. This Benina machine has a BSR. A BSR is a Benina stitch regulator and that helps regulate the stitch sizing when you're doing free motion work, which is quite helpful because we know that if we do free motion work, the stitches can vary a little bit in how they get their act together. So when I go around this, so that I don't have to keep stopping and starting, I'm going to start on the roof and do the roof first, but I'm going to start on the roof somewhere near the top of this wall over here, so that when I get around there, then I can just run down onto the wall. So I'm just here nearby, and I'm just going to along here. Now free motion means I don't have to turn my work, I could just go up there, but when it's something little like this I feel more comfortable sewing towards me, so I can just turn it as I go. And we've just about got the roof on our house already. Woohoo! So I've just gone there, I'm just above the wall now, so I'm just going to skip right onto that wall and come all the way down. And still staying on the house, coming right across, right across the bottom of the door, but then stopping while I'm still on the door so that I can come up around the door. And then back across the bottom of the door, back 
edge of the house and back up the other wall and then we've already got a house. It didn't take long to build this little house. When you're doing free motion you can do a couple of stitches in one spot and that does a little lock for you so that you can just trim your threads off. So that's done already now, so we're doing pretty well. Now we've got to pop our little lining out and we're going to lay this on. Again, you could measure it if you want to to find the middle or you can just make sure that you're pretty, think that you're pretty good up the end here. We should have about two inches each end. Yes, we have. That's quite good. So I'm just going to give it, um, I'm going to give it a little press so that it sits all together, but then I've actually got to iron these ends as well so that's going to sit nicely and then so with this lining that's sticking out I'm going to fold that edge down till you meet the batting and give that a press and then fold it over again onto that main background fabric and I'm going to do that at both ends so fold it down till it meets the batting and then again over onto the bag. And now I'm going to go back to my machine. I need my regular foot back on now. So I'll take this one off. And put my feed dogs back up. And I'm just going to sew now on the, on the blue, on the uh, lining fabric, close to both folded edges. So close to this edge down here and then about an eighth of an inch in on both ends. And this forms the casing for the little snap bits. You lose your scissors all the time, I lose my scissors all the time. And they're never far away. So I'm just going to come along here now about an eighth of an inch in from the, this top fold and that just gives it a nice little edge. And then I'm going to do the other end as well. So I've finished sewing both my casings close to both folded edges and now I'm going to fold that in half and I'm going to go back to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew one side seam, just one. Um, again with your quarter inch seam allowance and I'm just going to start a little bit down from the top with my stitching. I like to do it this way when I'm doing things that have a little exposed top edge and I'm just going to back stitch up to the top edge and then come back down again so that my start and starting point and the little trimmed threads are not right on that top edge. So I'll come all the way down and because we've already got uh, snap fastenings they're high tech snap fastenings, no less, ready so to go. Insert these into the casing so you want it to go in behind the lining fabric so that that's a double layer on the front and that should just push in. It might be a little bit snug, but that's quite good because you want it to sit nice and firmly in there. Push it in as far as you can get it to go so that you've got enough at this end as a seam allowance for the other side of the bag seam. And the same on this side in between the main fabric and the, the bag lining fabric and pop that in that way. So you need to put it in so that, I didn't show you that bit, I'll pull this one out again if I can just get hold of it. So the measurement is away from the front of the bag, so this, the clear side of the tape is to the front so that you get that rounded edge on the front. That's uh, reasonably important that you have it around the right way so that it snaps closed for you when you finish. So if you push both of those in as far as they'll go, and then we're going to go and sew the second side seam. So they should be in just a bit beyond your quarter inch seam allowance. So you shouldn't have too much trouble 
sewing that side seam there. Just pop it in again, just down from the top, and then a straight stitch, back stitch it up, and all the way down to the bottom. So that's the side seams done, but I kind of like my seams to be nice and tidy. So I'm going to overcast them and I do that with a zigzag stitch. So make sure if you're going to do a zigzag to do this sort of thing that your foot that you're using will accommodate the swing of the needle. You don't want to be breaking a needle because that doesn't help anything. So I'm going to switch it to zigzag. Now if your edges are a little bit uneven because we've got the layer with the batting and everything, you could at this stage just, just trim off any little extra bits and pieces. This is actually looking pretty good. Sometimes things move a little bit and you just need to trim off any little bits. It just helps everything sit nicer inside. So now I've got this all ready and the same thing I'm going to start down from the top and do my zigzag over, so that it zigzags right over those raw edges and it just stops things fraying and getting untidy inside. side as well. It's so coming down that second side. That's all finished. But there's one more little thing to do to make this bag so that we've got this nice little sort of squat base on it here. We can do that before we turn the bag out the right way. So we're going to open that up and we're going to, to call, form these little corners by opening that out and so that we've got this nice point here and we're going to stitch across that corner here. So just hold this rest of this bag which is a little contrary now that it's got those snap fastenings in it. You need to bring your little bag into submission I guess is the word. So we're just coming in maybe three quarters of an inch from the actual point. Oops, we just want to be on a straight stitch. Just so that we get a nice little corner there. You don't want to take in too much because then it'll be a nice big corner. And let's do the other side the same as well. So you want to open that out so that that seam goes up the center point there. Flatten it down so that you get it nice and straight and stitch across. corners our bag actually is finished it's just inside out so just open that up and pop those little corners out and here we have a delicious little snap bag with a little house on it so looking surprisingly like the other one slightly different colors so I thought that would be a fun little project to make you could use this to keep all sorts of nice little things in or not it's not a super strong catch so probably not good for for money folding money might stay in there but that round hard stuff probably might slide out but all sorts of other little things can go in there great for little gifts all sorts of things so that was the little house snap bag the pattern is available on my website gourmetquarter.com and thank you very much and enjoy those little house snap bags